Hello there, my name is Mark Mulholland and I'm an artist from Glasgow. Welcome to my studio and it's from here that I'll be running online video tutorials on a variety of subjects. This is the first of three videos covering portraiture and how to draw the face. We'll be looking at the materials that I use, some of the techniques that I adopt, as well as understanding proportions, taking measurements and producing a line drawing from a photograph. The materials I use varies from one drawing to another. But generally speaking, the paper that I work on is loose leaf cartridge paper, which probably starts around 100 GSM, that's the thickness of the paper, through to about 200 GSM. I also work in sketchbooks. Here we see an A5 sketchbook, a variety of drawings. I also like working on A4 sketchbooks. Using hardback sketchbooks keeps the paper nice and pristine. Using colour washes and then pencil drawing over the top in some cases. This one's a portraiture sketchbook. Now moving on to the drawing implements. I like using pencils that are sharpened to a fine point, like this 2H. Or a 4B. I have water soluble pencils that have a paintbrush symbol on them. To give you an example, the 2H using mark making like hatching and cross hatching. This pencil produces a light tone because of the hardness of the graphite or the lead. Moving towards an HB, slightly darker. This is a middle of the road, middle range pencil in terms of its durability. Then the 4B is the softest of these three pencils. Without much pressure, you can create dark tones and hatches, cross hatches, or swathes of tone that are really quite dark and controlling the pencil by the amount of weight that you press on the pencil. So with the 2H at the top, the HB followed by the 4B, we have pencils that vary in terms of how hard the graphite is, moving through to the softness of the graphite B, I presume meaning bold. This is a graphite stick, I think it's about a 2B. It comes in a solid block and without the wrapper you can use it side on, creating thick dark tone quickly. That's good for larger drawings. Or the graphite stick comes in a thinner variety. I think this is an HB graphite stick. The graphite is soluble with methylated spirits. You can create nice washes that way. Here I'm using a charcoal pencil. So the willow charcoal is held within the pencil, protecting the fragile nature of the, the charcoal. And then using a smudge stick, a rolled up sheet of paper essentially to help smudge instead of using your fingers which can have a fair amount of grease in the skin. I also like using biros, to create interesting lines, nice fine point, nice dark tone. A variety of marks can be made that way for speedy drawings. Moving on to the water soluble pencil, you can apply this to dry paper. You can then with a brush and water dilute this creating washes of graphite.
you can then also work onto wet paper. So for example here, the pencil is being pulled back over the top of the area that I've just diluted and it doesn't damage the paper underneath. When we aim to draw in a realistic manner, we have to pay close attention to the proportions. In this case, looking straight on at the face, we notice first of all that in blue, we have a circle for the cranium and a U shape for the jawline. We notice that the eyes are halfway between where we've placed the chin and the top of the head, the cranium. And then in this diagram, delineated in red, we notice that the distance between the chin and the nose is the same as from the bottom of the nose to the eyebrows, and the same distance again from the eyebrows to the hairline, the top of the forehead. There is a red line of symmetry running down the middle. Here is a line drawing then using those proportions. Moving on to a three-quarter view, that's the head turned slightly to one side, we notice that that central straight line of symmetry now curves to the left. The U-shape of the jawline is now not directly underneath the circle, it's slightly to the left. We also notice that the straight lines dividing the chin to the nose and the nose to the eyebrows are curving down slightly because we're seeing the front and the side of the head at the same time. This diagram in fact helps to show the shapes of the features which are sitting on this curving three-dimensional form. The face then has been rendered in this case as an underpainting with brush and oil paint. So let's start drawing the face and always start with the basics. So on a sheet of cartridge paper, in this case 100 GSM, A4 in size, and using an HB pencil, I'm going to start with that circular form to suggest the cranium. A U shape underneath that. And then I'm pointing out here how, in fact, the U-shape is one half of the height of the circle and therefore in total from the top to the bottom uh, one third of the total height of this drawing so far, so three zones. I've then got a central line of symmetry drawn freehand, pulling the pencil towards me and then checking here by measuring with my fingers that I have in fact got that line of symmetry down the middle. Notice how I'm holding the pencil quite far back I'm now taking a measurement halfway up from the chin to the top of the head and then using my fingers to double check and this is going to be the height of the eyes. A straight line across, starting to draw an oval shape to the left and to the right, halfway above and halfway below that central line and then a third eye should fit in the space in between those two eyes with a finger's width on either side of the outside edge of the eyes. Now for the nose, the base of the nose is at the point, the lower curve of the circle that intersects with the lines between row two and three. Then coming down from the eyebrows, the bridge of the nose should more or less connect then with the bottom of the nose dropping now two lines down from the inner corners of the eyes. The nostril shouldn't extend outwards beyond those points in general. Now moving down to the lips, the middle line of the lips, first thing drawn, that's the line that's created when the lips are closed, is more or less halfway between the base of the nose and the chin. Now dropping lines down from the middle of the pupils or the inside edge of the pupils to create the width of the mouth. Perhaps I've drawn the lips a little bit wide but I'll come back and correct that later on. The top and bottom lips lines are drawn in and then a potato shape for the bottom of the chin. Notice that cartilaginous part of the chin is a distance away from the bottom lip. The ears now are top of the ears in line with the eyebrow and the bottom of the ears in line with the base of the nose. 
two simple curves. Double checking here that the distance between the chin and the nose is the same as the nose to the eyebrows, same as the eyebrows to the hairline. Drawing the hair on, giving a little bit more volume to the top of the cranium. And then the neck comes out from underneath the earlobes. Then the muscle of the neck starts curving outwards towards where the shoulders would be. And now introducing the photo of my subject, I'm looking to take the formulaic drawing, this generic way of drawing a face and starting to get some of the proportions and sizes and shapes of the features of my model into this drawing. So starting to change slightly the position of the eyes, the way that the eye is shaped, also known as the cut of the eye. understanding the shapes within the nose, for example, the angle of the eyebrows, the shape of the bridge of the nose, down the sides of the nose, then into the cartilaginous part of the middle of the nose and the nostrils. I'm also noticing in this moment that the nostrils are narrower in my model. That needs to be corrected, dropping a line down from the inside corner of the eye that I've now altered makes the nostrils narrower. Reaching for my battery operated rubber, rubbing out sections quite easily. The middle eye can be removed also at this point. Any planning that's getting in the way can be removed. I think another glaringly obvious mistake or something that needs to be changed from the generic face is the width of my model's lips in my drawing. Also the jawline is something that I'm planning to alter but at the moment drawing some shapes into the cheek thinking how the face is structured by constantly looking at the photograph occasionally glancing at the drawing a lot of looking happens at the photograph and the hand is moving in unison Yes, the lips definitely need to be narrowed, dropping a line down from the inside edge of the pupil to get the width of the mouth. Do that again on the right hand side, dropping this line down gives me the point at where the lips should be, making some alterations. Lots of decision making happening. So when the pencil's idle, there's lots of looking that's happening. Don't feel you have to get it right straight away. In fact, I find that my eyesight's not really working very well at this point. I'm seeing a face. I'm seeing that there's a fringe. I'm seeing general shapes, but it's only after a while where you start noticing the true nature of what you're looking at, those fine details that will allow you to get things accurate. And the more that you look and the more patience you have to not just glance, but really observe, even take it beyond observation, take it towards analysis. And when you use that almost scientific word, you are thinking about that level of looking that's required.
Now that area of the forehead was looking too vast, too large. The shape was too big in comparison to some of the smaller shapes being drawn into the face. So starting to draw some details, for example, the way that the hair is parted. My eye was drawn towards the earlobe, noticing that the earlobe is in fact the only part of the ear that I can see, the rest is cloaked behind the hair. So although I've drawn the ear in the generic face, I'm only going to be drawing into this, that which I can see. So the hair is going to be coming over the top of the ear and therefore the hair bulges at that part of the head because the top of the ear is pushing the hair out. Then I'm drawing part of the hair that curls down over the neck, making the neck look like it's narrower. I'm consciously drawing only in line, trying not to draw any tone at the moment, so no shading. I want to create a bit of volume at the bottom of my drawing, so conscious that I haven't yet drawn in the part of the shoulder that I see on the left hand side there. Working out the angle that the neck's going to be coming at. Then the hair will be drawn over the top. It's at this point that I'm looking to make changes to my model's jawline. It widens out at that point there, just in line with the lip, bottom lip. Um, squarer than I had originally drawn it on my generic face. There needs to be more of a gap from the corner of the lips to the curve in the jawline. I need to make some changes there also. My eyes now taken towards the muscle round about the mouth. Widening that jaw even further. From widening it on one side, I have to be careful not to leave it too narrow on the other. So, although our faces aren't perfectly symmetrical, trying to keep a certain amount of symmetry going on. Yes, some alterations required here to the chin, lowering the chin further, noticing that it was a little too high. So again, plenty of looking. Decisions made. Chin lowered. Starting to get that little indent in the middle of the chin also. So this drawing is far from complete and far from perfect and to be aware that things need to be changed but that I have the power to change them, I have the ability and that comes with spending more time on it, being patient, not getting too concerned if it's not perfect straight away. So you've watched me create the drawing from a photograph in line in this first video clip. If you would like to give it a go yourself, then I suggest that you take a photograph of yourself 
or somebody else and print it out or work directly from the screen, taking some measurements, plotting out the proportions and the features and see what happens. Join me in the second video clip where I'll show you how to look at shadow shapes, how to create internal structure in the face and how to start applying tone. See you then.